We are certainly grateful that the Lord has led these individuals to come and render music to us today, and we are grateful for that. Let's show them by Stand with me for a moment. I would like to read two scriptures that can be found in your bulletin and they're listed on our board and on our screen. Joshua 1 9 and 1 Samuel 17 45. I told you I will be continuing with the series and the other scriptures will be added at a later time. But Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 1 Samuel 17, 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with the javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. I'm going to just talk to you today on the subject, conquering giants. Conquering giants. Gracious God and Father, we thank you for this privilege to come together and explore your word. We pray that you would just open up the hearts of your people, touch their minds, strengthen their hearts, and encourage them to guide their lives by your word. We seek the presence of the Holy Spirit in our understanding and interpretation, and we pray that we can be a reflection of this word as we go forward in life. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Well, welcome to this moment of reflecting on the Spirit and the sermon titled Conquering Giants. Conquering Giants. Say that with me. Conquering Giants. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had to face any giants in your life? Anybody? Have you ever had to really face any serious giants in your life? Well, today we are going to explore this message that is found in these two scriptures. And these two passages will provide us with invaluable wisdom and knowledge and encouragement that we need when we face the challenges of giants in our lives. In the book of Joshua, we find the words of divine assurance spoken to Joshua, who was about to lead the Israelites into the promised land. Now, when he received this message, Moses had died, and now he is the new leader. He's about to lead the people into the promised land. And God came to him. And God said, have I not commanded you to be strong and to be courageous? Have I not commanded you to be strong and to be courageous? He said, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever, wherever you go. Now, this powerful verse, it reminds us that when we face giants, when we face giants, brothers and sisters, we are not alone. God says that I will be with you, and he's promising that every step of the way, he will be at your side. He will be with you. And then our second scripture that we're going to study today comes from 1 Samuel 17, 45. And 
It draws from the familiar story of David and Goliath. David and Goliath. In 1 Samuel 7.45, we discover a profound truth that we all need to make a part of our life as David is facing this giant. Young David, a shepherd boy, he's facing a seasoned warrior, Goliath. And he has nothing with him but a sling and five stones. But while Goliath is towering over him, David's unwavering faith teaches us that no matter how strong or how high and threatening your giants are in life, we can face them in the name of the Lord because the battle belongs to the Lord. that the battle belonged to the Lord. So as we study these two, two passages of scriptures today, conquering giants, let us be reminded of the timeless truth that God is speaking to us through these passages. And may they take resonate in our spirit and in our heart and become a part of how we live in life. Now, if you're looking at me like you've never had any giants, let me just give you a couple of lists of giants that you're going to face and that we Christians do face in life. We face the giants of doubt. Let me say that. There are moments in all of our lives when we encounter something that calls us to even doubt our faith. Calls us sometimes I know this to be true because I've talked to people who have shared it with me. It even caused us to wonder, is there really a God? I'm going through all of this. Look at all of this stuff that's coming my way. And so you're going to face giants of doubts in your life. Then another giant, Christians you're going to face, and you're not immune to it, you're going to face giants of temptation. Christians are confronted with temptations, and you're going to be finding that your moral life is on the line, and the commitment that you have made to God is challenged by the temptations that you face. You're going to face giants of fear. Many Christians struggle with fear. You fear the unknown. What's going to happen next? You fear failure. I can't make it. You fear the consequences of your actions. You're going to face those giants in life. Some of them that you've already witnessed, even right now in our political system, giants of pride. Pride can hinder us from humbling ourselves and following God. Pride, self-righteousness, attitudes of superiority, Pride can step in the way. And then another giant that so many of you are facing right now, unforgiveness. Somebody is facing unforgiveness. You're holding grudges and you're refusing to forgive others about something that happened and you don't even know, remember what it was. But you know you can't forgive it. <laughs> Although you can't remember what it was. You're holding on. Satan will always come to Christians with another giant, lust. Some of us, sexual temptation, impure thoughts. And all of these things can take control over us and interfere with the purity of thought that God wants us to have. There's so many Christians. Yeah, you come to church and you go through all of the rituals of church and you come and go, mama came, grandmama came and all of that, you stop by and that. But let me tell you something, lukewarmness. Jesus even warned us about that when he was bringing out those seven churches in the book of Revelation. He said that we are lukewarm. We don't know whether we're going to the right or the left. We're just struggling with complacency. You have a lack of passion for the Word of God, His mission, and His purpose for your life. 
Then another giant you're going to face, and listen to this one closely, is spiritual warfare. Let me say that again. Spiritual warfare. You know, as soon as Jesus was baptized, the first thing that Satan did was engage him in spiritual warfare. And you're going to face spiritual warfare. You're going to find yourself battling with evil forces all the time. And they're going to come at you from the right, from the left, from the front, and from the back. When you are a child of God, you are not immune. In fact, you are a target of Satan. And he's going to come after you, even like he came after Job, just to test who you are. And see if you're really grounded. Then you're going to face the last challenge I will share with you. And that is the challenge of the pride of knowledge. Christians who have a deep knowledge of the scripture and theology and all of that, don't allow your personal intellectual mind to tell you that there is no God. Sometimes kids go off to college and they're all right. As long as they're in church, but when they come back, they're too smart to be a Christian. All this Christian stuff is foolish. And they lose their confidence. They lose their settlement in the religion of their families. And they slip away into other cultures and other understandings only to discover that it's empty. Give me that old-time religion. It's good enough for me. We had, oh, we don't have all the modern technology and all of that as some of these churches have, but we do have God, that same God that brought us through will carry us on. So, our first scripture that we'll look at today will be dealing with this young man, Joshua. Given this marvelous and challenging responsibility to lead the people in the promised land. And he was given a word from God. I command you to be strong and courageous. Let's stay there for a moment. If you're going to conquer giants in your life, you're going to have to be strong. Be strong, people. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. In our journey of faith, God often calls of us to be strong and to be courageous. But how can we actually exhibit these values in the midst of challenges? You need to know that you can be strong and courageous by this. Number one, acknowledge your fear. Acknowledge your fear. Fear is a natural human emotion. Fear. And sometimes fear protects us from some stuff that we would get ourselves in if we didn't fear it. God placed it there for a purpose and for a reason. Fear is a natural emotion. And it can manifest itself in different forms. But God wants you to acknowledge your fear. Because, you see, there's a couple of fears that can hinder us and cause us to become weak and not strong and courageous. And that's the fear, let me say this again, the fear of failure. I want to step out and say this. The fear of failure. Some of you, God has placed some great plans in your mind. But they have never manifested themselves in the world because that plan was given only to you. And you didn't do anything with it due to the fear of failure. So your plan will never come alive in the world. And you know another thing that we fear is that we fear the unknown. That's why we get so caught up in tradition 
that we don't want to do anything other than what we are familiar with. Our comfort zone. We fear the unknown, not even knowing what the unknown holds. I remember the story about a man who was slipped down into a well. And on his way down, he held and he caught a rope that prevented him from going all the way down. And he held on to the rope all night until somebody came the next day. They were looking for him. And they were calling out his name. And he answered, I'm in the well. I've been holding on to this rope. My hands are bleeding. I'm, I'm tired. Of I'm, I'm afraid. He was afraid of the unknown. So he was holding on. And then the person who looked down and said, listen, just let go. Let go. No, no. He said, just let go. Then they finally convinced him he let go. He dropped two inches. <laughs> Fear of the unknown. Sometimes we just got to let go. And let God step into our lives. Fear of the unknown. We stand here today asking God to give us what it means and what it needs for us to conquer fears and be strong and courageous. And another fear that people have is this. You know what that is? The fear of rejection. The fear of rejection. You, want, you don't want to be rejected. You want to be accepted. Everybody is not going to like you. Amen. <laughs> Make up your mind about that. Amen. And that's all right. Just be you. Right. Just be who God has made you to be. Stop trying to live to be accepted and liked by everybody. Sometimes when you do that, you will make other people dislike you because they know that you're faking it. Amen. Just be yourself. Amen. And don't worry. If people don't like you and you know that you are a true child of God and you've been wanting to be friendly and true to them and have never done one single thing against them in life and they still don't like you, go shopping. You know what you need to do? Go shopping. Go to Hallmark and find a card and send it to him and say, I'm sorry for your loss. Be yourself. Be strong. Be courageous. Scripture tells us that, yes, we're going to encounter different things in life, but when Joshua was going through this situation, I know that he was reminded of the Scripture, Psalms 34. I sought the Lord. He answered me, and he is the one that delivered me from all my fears. Just turn to God in the midst of your situation, and God can deliver you. So acknowledging our fears can be difficult because it causes us to reflect and be vulnerable. However, listen to this. By facing our fears, we allow God to work within us and transform our weakness into a source of strength Amen. to God be the glory. Amen. In your weakness, God finds strength and he can bring out the hero in you Amen. by transforming it into strength. Listen, when we really comprehend the meaning of this, we acknowledge the fact that God can open doors and deliver us from our fear and lead us into freedom and into courage to do what he wants us to do. Now, there's always the opposite argument. Some will acknowledge and say that fear is a sign and acknowledging one's fear is a sign of weakness. However, the Bible teaches us that true strength lies in our willingness to confront our fears and to rely on God's power 
to overcome them. Joshua, as we're speaking about him in this text, had witnessed the journey of the Israelites through the wilderness. And he had experienced many struggles and many giants of doubt along the way. He knew the challenges that they had had in conquering the promised land. Despite this, God assured him, Joshua, I'm with you. Joshua, be encouraged. Joshua, be strong. And I share to you today that same God that encouraged Joshua is encouraging you today. Don't be afraid of your challenges. Just go forward and conquer your giants because God is with you. Be strong. Now, let's transition. And now that we recognize the importance of acknowledging our fears, let us move on to the next step in conquering giants. In this scripture also, trust this. Trust in the presence of the Lord in your life. Trust the presence of God in your life. The Bible tells us here, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. Trusting in God's presence is crucial for us to be strong and courageous. When we understand that God is always with us, our faith is strengthened. And we can face situations with confidence. God's promise to Joshua it echoes throughout the scripture. Jesus assured to us, surely he said in Matthew, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. This promise extends to all of us believers right now, knowing that God's constant presence is with us. When Moses was leading the children of Israel out of bondage, and he had all them grumbling folks. They even broke the Ten Commandments. They were fussing and fighting. Moses stayed up in the mountain too long, and they went out and made their own God. -God. They built a statue out of gold with all of their jewelry. When Moses came down, what were they doing? Worshiping them. Moses got so mad, he just God, I can't believe you sent me over here to get these people out of Egypt. <laughs> Look at them, they're grumbling, they're fighting, they even threatened to kill me. And then Moses asked God a question. He says, Lord, I've been doing my best trying to lead these people to the promised land. But I discovered that I need somebody to go with me. I need some help along the way. And let me tell you sometimes, you can't make it all the time by yourself. You're going to need somebody to help you along the way. You're going to need somebody dependable. Not somebody behind your back, plotting, but somebody that you can depend on. And he asked God, he said, God, who shall you send with me? And the Lord says, well, go ahead, Moses. My presence is going to go with you. Oh, somebody ought to say amen. He said that. Stop worrying about who's going to go with you. When everybody sees you, they're going to be able to see that I am with you. And if God be for you, nothing can be. Nothing can be against you. So God says that my presence will go with you. And in the book of Isaiah, he says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your Lord. I will strengthen you, and I will help you, and I will uphold you with my right hand. Hold to his unchanging hand. Hold on. Trust in God, and trust in God's presence with us, enable us to release all of our anxieties, knowing that 
He is in control. And when we do that, it provides us with a sense of comfort, security, and peace in the midst of the storm. This trust allows us to draw strength from God, strength from His unfailing love, strength from His unfailing faithfulness. Some of you might say, well, how can we trust in an invisible God? We walk by faith and not by sight. God says that without faith it is impossible to please Him. Joshua, listen, Joshua was given that challenge to go with God's presence. But you know what? It's always good to be able to go with God's presence and you can look back on what God has already done. Somebody say amen. You see, Joshua, he was leading them into the promised land. But before he got to the promised land, he had spent 40 years in the wilderness. And in the wilderness, he had already seen what God can do. He had already seen the miracles that God It means 
relinquishing control and surrendering totally to God. However, when we take that leap of faith, we position ourselves to experience, listen to this, God's faithfulness. And we are able to see his miraculous works in our lives. Joshua's journey into the promised land required him to take a bold step of faith and step out into the darkness, not even knowing where he was going. So as I leave Joshua 1.9, I'm going to take you over now to 1 Samuel 17, and we're going to spend a few minutes there, and then we can roll up out of here. I got that from my young people. <laughs> In 1 Samuel 17, brothers and sisters, we find something going on here. We find ourselves like young David dealing with battles. And from the battlegrounds of our personal life and the wildest scopes of our world, we see battle. We even see a battle going on right now in Ukraine, Putin and Russia. Something interesting happened yesterday. Putin had recruited this mercenary group of soldiers to fight with him in an unjust war against a little nation that he wanted to go into and rob. But something strange happened. Very good people that he had paid mercenary soldiers to fight with his soldiers, they turned against him. And they were marching to Moscow, to the capital of Russia, to capture the president. And he had hired them to capture another president. Oh, you all missed it. Yeah. Listen, I want to challenge you to understand this statement. If you are a child of God, I don't care what comes against you and what battle you're in. Remember, the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we find this in the scripture that we're about to study right now because you see, young David, young David, he's in a situation where he's fighting and coming up against an experienced warrior. And this warrior, he had been hunting the army of Israel, challenging them. And he was such a strong giant the Israeli army was afraid of him. And they had lost all hope. And then a young man, a young shepherd boy shows up. And this young shepherd boy, he shows up with nothing but faith and a stone. <laughs> oh, I wish I had with me. Listen, fearlessly he was willing to face this giant, all of this adversity with nothing but faith and a stone. And then he came up to the big giant and he said to him, you have come against me with a sword, right. with a spear, uh -huh. and with a javelin. Yes. But I come against you. Yes. But I come against you yes. in the power
that when it seems impossible, God would take those you have recruited to be on your side and have them to change sides and come after you. God can do what no other God can do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. living 